the experiences we have had, the events to come, and the reality in which we live right now have all been shaped in one way or another by the decisions we have made in past, present, and in future. This is the story of how $25 and being in the right place at the right time led to the greatest capture of my life. Enjoy. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to 2022, and welcome back to Stories from the Collection. You join me today at a very special place with a very special reel. And let me begin uh, this story by telling you about how this story is the inspiration behind the entire series. And I'm sure you're wondering, well, why didn't I start with this story? Well, the reason for that is COVID. <laughs> COVID actually shut down access to this location in 2020. And so I had to start off my entire Stories from the Collection uh, series with another very good uh, fill-in, which was my very first carp rod and carp reel. And then as time went on, weather conditions did not yield an opportunity to fish here. And a lot of things came up. We'll just say that. So now here we are, episode seven, seven heaven. I suppose that's the only way I could describe this place and the moment that uh, I'm gonna talk about in great depth today. Let me take you to this spot nearly 20 years ago when I first stumbled upon it after moving up to this area with my family, passing by here all the time, but without a knowledge of carp fishing and barely any knowledge of fishing, to be honest, I never went a line here. Not until 2018. My son was due to be born at any time and you know, I was looking for a, an optimal spring location and this spot just seemed right. It ticked all the right boxes. So I came out here and you know, my intuition paid off in a big way. I had three gorgeous fish on that first session here in 2018 and uh, the biggest of those being a 30 pounder, 30 pound two I believe it was, absolutely gorgeous fish. And this spot obviously went into that, you know, into the filing cabinet. This is a good spot for springtime. I'll definitely come back here sometime. And then my son was born and I couldn't come back here because I had to, you know, I had familial obligations, daddy duties. And so I had to find places that were closer to home or I would make longer trips. This is a place that doesn't allow for overnighting. So I had to, you know, put this, spot to the back burner but in 2019 let's start off by now talking about the reel 2019 I literally acquired this reel on New Year's Day I have with me today my Shimano Speedmaster Custom X 5000 I bet you're looking at this going why on earth did this catch Will's eye well it's funny that I was on Kijiji, as I normally do, with uh, just typing in big reel because I realized that not everybody knew what a carp reel was, nor would they define it as such. So I just looked up big reel, I remember that. And this reel popped up um, with a lot of reels. And this gentleman had taken a photo that looked like it had been taken a photo with a potato. But in that photo, I could just make out the badging here on the side, and I could just make out that it was a Shimano body type, but I couldn't identify it, so I asked him for further photos. And the moment I laid eyes upon it and I saw its condition, something in me ticked. And I said to him, man, that looks like it's an immaculate condition. And he said, yeah, he says, uh, it was in a box in my garage. It's been there for 30 years. The mice have eaten the box away, but the reel has never seen line. And I was just gobsmacked. He only wanted $25 from it. And in all my research, this is a very unique Speedmaster Custom X as it is a three ball bearing model, as opposed to the more commonly found two ball bearing models. I remember driving down to Oshawa 
foaming at the mouth. I was so excited. And um, I got there, I picked up the reel, brought it home, and, and I had a little photo shoot with it. And I was sharing it with all my friends. I remember saying to Big Jim, Slim Jim McLaughlin, um, that uh, I was really looking forward to using it. And, and you know, it needed to have a fish on it, but I was needing some help with identifying its age. And with Jim being a Shimano Pro staff, he was able to tell me it was from 19. 87, 1988, um, when he went to the warranty department and told me a little bit about it and said it wasn't super, super rare um, as there was 55,000 of them made that year, but that it was to, to find one in, in the condition that it was in was quite remarkable. So, yeah, and I remember a few other people, you know, saying, wow, that's a cool find, you know, I can't wait to see if you catch a fish on it. Uh, my buddy Doug said, you're going to record that first run. I said, absolutely. And, you know, but there was a few other people that had some pretty critical things to say, you know. They said, well, it's a paperweight, you know, I wouldn't fish with that. You'd be better putting that up on your shelf, you know. It's a, it's a conversation piece at best. But to them, all I said was, you know, I feel like I need to catch a fish on this reel. This reel needs to have one fish in its lifetime. So anyhow, as time went on, I lined up the reel. I got it all set up and... Uh, I thought to myself, where shall I start my spring campaign? And there was only one spot in mind, uh, this very spot right here. So I came back out here and uh, started baiting. I'd just come back from the UK actually at that point and uh, was buzzing after catching some absolutely brilliant fish with my friend Paul, uh, including my very first UK fish, which I captured all on the UK diaries on the Anglophiles YouTube channel. So. With all that being said, I wanted to collaborate further with the Angler Files, and so I said to John I was going to start doing a campaign at this very spot that I would entitle the Creek Chronicles. He thought that was a great idea and that I was going to spend as many months here as I possibly could, as many sessions here anyway, trying to capture as many beautiful fish as I could from the mouth of this creek. And the first episode went just as planned. Two fish, rapid succession. And it was a beautiful day, it was a beautiful early spring day. I had two gorgeous fish and one of them was caught on this reel. Um, and then the week following, I, cause actually I was out with, I was out with Taya for that first session. I remember that now. We had the two rods in and this reel caught one of them and the other rod caught the other. Um, but uh, as, as luck would have it, I had the opportunity to get out the following week and I brought out the camera equipment once again. and. Um, got the rod out and started talking about tactics because that was a time where I would actually talk about tactics you know I said this was an optimal springtime location and I was talking about all these things why I chose this spot and I talked about my rigging and uh, you know my baiting strategy and whatnot and there was a ton of fish when I showed up to that second you know on that second episode there's a ton of fish swimming around in here and I just knew oh, I'm gonna catch a fish today there's no doubt about it I was feeling quite quite confident um, and sure enough I had two fish in rapid succession on that second session here and first one was a beauty second one was also a really nice long lean male and they both fought really well um, and then it just went dead dead quiet for probably close to two hours and in that time I watched as you know a few fish swam in and out and I figured out oh, maybe that's the end of it but I still had a bit of time left so I picked up the phone and called Pete Bowman, and I'm sure many of you know that name. And Pete and I chatted for some time about an upcoming filming shoot that we were going to do up um, on Lake Scugog um, at my friend Lawrence's place, uh, Sunset Haven. And it was while I was on that phone call with Pete, while we were chatting about our plans, that I first saw this thing coming in, and it was, it was a white shape. I couldn't really make it out. It was like 50 yards away, and it was sort of coming in and I thought, you know, it's on the wind. I thought, oh, someone's garbage from ice fishing is, is pushing in. And, you know, I was, I was a little bit disappointed at first and Pete said, oh yeah, you know, you see that out there. And the next thing I knew, the fins came out on either side. And I realized that it wasn't, it wasn't garbage. <laughs> it was, it was a koi. I know for a fact that a few, um, a few naughty words came out of my mouth while I was on the phone with Pete. And uh, I think one of them was just, holy f it's a koi. And, you know, Pete was, you know, just, wow, no way. 
How wild is that? And he says, well, best of luck to you, buddy. And he had, he had somewhere to be. I think he had to go to the gym that day. So he said to me, uh, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, try your best. And I don't think he thought I could do it either. I didn't think I could do it. But at the same time, here it was, this massive koi swimming around. And I, I guess at that point, it was, it was over 20 pounds for certain when I saw it coming in. It was big fish, big frame. So I watched that fish probably for five, 10 minutes. And funny enough, I never once grabbed my phone to videotape it because it was clear as day. You could see it, no problem. But I was living in the moment. I was living in the moment until, of course, the fish swam across my line, bumped it, and tore off back into the middle of 60,000 acres of water. And I remember flopping down in my chair, feeling like the wind had left my sails. I just felt so disappointed. I was so beaten up by it. And I, I, I remember how devastating it was. So I, as I do when I'm feeling devastated and a little bit down, I called Papa John of the Angler Files, John Balmer, and we chatted about it. And he said, you know, oh, it's really unfortunate that it's, you know, it swam out on you. But he said, think about it. Now you have a target. You've got this fish that, you know, is going to make a really great story for your, for your series. And I thought, yeah. And I mean, that kind of lifted my spirits a little, but not much. You know, I, I was still feeling quite deflated. So I sat there and, you know, I was sitting there, I was tapping my foot, you know, I'm scratching my chin, I'm doing this on my knee, you know, I, I was I was still antsy pants, you know, after leaving that phone call with John. And I remember looking at the time and thinking, I gotta get going home. You know, it's getting close to dinner time. I've had two fish, it's been a successful session and I can talk about this. I'll just do a quick closing video, but I'll bring the rod in. So I reached down for the rod and I remember my fingers were around the reel seat like this like or just floating around it and I looked across like down the blank over the tip guide and there was the tail sitting up like this and I realized it was the koi right on top of me right on top of the baited pile and I, I remember time stopped my heart was in my throat I, I, I wasn't breathing I was afraid that if I moved it was gonna spook and then no sooner did that happen seconds later the fish righted itself and spun back out to the middle of the lake tore off into the middle of the lake and my line followed it alarm was screaming reel is spinning around and i'm in complete disbelief i reach back i, I, I grab the rod and I, I i set hook into it and i'm watching as the line is following the, the nose of that fish and still at that point i, I still don't think i believed it. i thought oh, surely there was another fish in there and, I, and it's picked it up and it's running alongside this koi or they're moving together and it wasn't until I saw the lead come up out of the water and the fish turned over with it that I realized I had the koi. And I realized I have to, I have to get the camera on. So I, I ran back and I turned on the video camera, got it like turned in the right position and everything. And then I started fighting the fish. And I to be at a loss for words for me is, um, is a very difficult feat. If you know me, that's a very difficult thing to have happen. But indeed I was at a loss for words. And I remember looking back at the camera a few times, trying to say something witty and I couldn't. And that fish fought like hell. It was in the creek, out to the lake, across to a snag, and it was dodging the net every opportunity it could. And it was a, it was a very lengthy bout, you know, and it, it was even on for a minute before I even got the camera turned on as well. And, you know, I think at the end of it, it was probably a, a seven eight minute fight but the line was only 10 yards out like you know what i mean it was a proper scrap and when that fish finally went into the back of the net i remember i was i was already on my knees in the water i was praying to the carp gods in those last few seconds of the fight you know like thinking about that hook hold is it holding is it holding and i saw it go over the net cord and i i, I once again i turned to say something to the camera like woohoo but I, I couldn't i opened my mouth and it was just like <laughs> and in the bottom of my net was this remarkable fish and um, 24 pounds, two ounces, and it is considered to be the Canadian record. It's unofficial. I wasn't going to kill it to claim the record. And a lot of people actually asked me, did I let that fish go? Because on the film, Creek Chronicles episode two, I don't show the release because I had to, to battle with that for a little while. Um, was it going to be illegal for me to release a koi back into the water? But I realized that koi, 
you know, whether or not they are Cyprinus uh, rebufficus or Cyprinus carpio, there's a lot of, you know, it's, it's up in the air as to what their actual, you know, genus and species is. Pete Bowman, you know, has calmed my nerves to, to realize that a fish is native to the water from which it is captured. So letting that fish go and knowing that most scientists agree that it's simply just a common carp that has been, you know, it has a genetic mutation that has resulted in these color changes, I know now that it was okay for me to release that fish. <sighs> Amazing. You know, it's funny too, actually, I forgot to mention this. In uh, 2018, um, many months after my son was born, I was fishing down, not too far away from here actually, um, this spot had weeded right up and it was impossible to fish, but uh, I was fishing and uh, this guy had told me, he says, have you seen that big white carp that swims around here? And you know when you hear the voice and you can smell the beer from like 20 feet away? You know, at nine o'clock in the morning, you know, how, 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 uh, how much could you trust his word, right? He, he told me, he's like, oh yeah, my friends and I call him Moby Dick. He's gotta be close to 30 pounds, he's huge. And I, I didn't believe a word he said, you know, but. Funny enough, he, he was right, this, this fish existed. And it was, you know, in my hands. And the most beautiful fish I've ever landed, you know, and, and it could very well be the most impressive capture I'll ever have. You know, that might've been it. That might've been my peak and it's all downhill from here. But regardless, there's many journeys yet to have. And, um, but not for this reel. Um, this reel came out with me a few more times uh, for the rest of the 2019 season and into 2020. Um, it was there for the spring campaign, which was obviously one of the most trying and testing sessions, a series of sessions in my entire fishing career. Um, a month of blanking in the same spot and I just could not seem to pull a fish until the very last episode, episode five. But coming into 2021, knowing very well that we now had the opportunity to run multiple rods, I could not find a match to this reel. I could not find a three ball bearing Speedmaster, nor a 5,000 Speedmaster Custom X. And because I couldn't find a match for it, this reel went to the back burner in 2021. It never came out. And here we are now in 2022, and I've come to accept something a couple of realities. Finding a replacement for this or replacement parts if it were to ever break, not gonna happen. Um, so I've come to the decision that this reel will be retired after this session. This will be its final voyage. And it's funny, normally I have a difficult time thinking about a title for these episodes until after I've shot them. Um, but I already know the title of this episode. I've known it for some time the name of this reel. This reel is known as the dream catcher and I don't think you have to stretch your imagination to figure out why. So Len, you might be watching this and um, if you are just know that uh, finally after all this time I am gonna take your advice and I'm gonna put this reel on a shelf. Uh, well maybe not a shelf a shadow box with a picture of the koi right behind it. Welcome to episode seven, the dream catcher. Let's see if we can give this reel one last one day contract out on the water. Let's hope it's fruitful. I stood by as afternoon gave way to early evening, and I felt my confidence begin to slip away. An easterly wind, much stronger than forecasted, had really put a dampener on things. I thought to myself, if these winds would just slow down for just a few minutes, things might actually happen around here. Well, Lady Luck was on my side.
well, the fruit of my labor. A gorgeous common. Absolutely beautiful fish. I'd say that's quite a result. Quite a paddle on that fish as well. Absolutely shut. We'll get a few photos and we'll get this one back. Well, how about that? I've been out here all day, and now I've had two fish in rapid succession. A little later than I was originally anticipating, but nonetheless, check this fish out. Gorgeous scales on it. It's got a very interesting kind of look to it, and very pale on the top, too. I don't know if that's ghosty or not, but I'll tell you what, that is a stunning, little fish and I'm quite happy with that. Well made up. What a stunner. Let's get this one back. Another gorgeous high double, low 20. Not gonna bother weighing it, but a beautiful fish. Definitely packing on the pounds just before the spawn. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Let's get this one back. Let's start getting things packed away. But you know me, you always leave the rod in last.
things go sometimes. I literally just packed away the camera that I normally capture the fights with. And uh, this rod's absolutely melted off. What a day! Six and a half hours of blanking, and it's all turned around in the past two. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Well, that's the way we're gonna close this one out. It's a lovely low twenty, common, absolutely beautiful, absolutely. Beautiful.